Tonight on Panorama, the property developer who's turned taxpayers' cash into a personal fortune. A news footing bill, a news paying prize, public paying prize and footing bill. And the charity housing vulnerable people that's helped him do it. It never felt like a charity. It always felt like a business. We investigate the charity's links to the developer. He had a stranglehold over the charity. They were dependent on him. And claims the charity's been failing some tenants. It didn't feel like home, feel like prison. It was destroyed, absolutely destroyed. I've never seen anything like it. We ask, is public money being exploited for private gain? It's a really Wild West system, and the winners are the people creaming off, quite often, very large profits. Boats like this don't come cheap. Most people would never have the opportunity to own a boat like this. It would cost you more than a couple of hundred grand and you can see why. One just like this was bought by a property developer called Paul O'Rourke. Here he is explaining his business model. Uh, we're a private limited company that buys properties for one price, develops them and sells them for another. That's what we do as a business. There's a bit more to it than that. And it's all about the housing benefit that can be claimed to house vulnerable people who need support. The government calls it exempt accommodation. Exempt accommodation is a particular type of supported housing which is exempt from the housing benefit regulations, which means you can charge a higher rent. While there are good providers of this type of housing, there's mounting evidence this taxpayer-funded system is open to exploitation. It's a really Wild West system, and the winners are the people creaming off, quite often, very large profits. You and I are paying for this situation every, every day that we pay tax. Paul O'Rourke works closely with a charity called MySpace Housing Solutions. It's a registered provider of social housing. This is the village of North Wingfield in Derbyshire. In 2018, Paul O'Rourke bought Arkham House here. MySpace took a 20-year lease on the property and used it to house and support vulnerable people. It's a really community-based village. Is that it there? Yeah, that's the building. Charlie Hamilton Kay works with people affected by antisocial behaviour. By the middle of 2019, just weeks after tenants moved into Arkham House, she was already dealing with problems. The behaviour was constant. Drunkenness, loud music, suspected drug use, early hours of the morning, late hours of night, constant reports and calls to the police. It was really terrifying. Armed police cordoned off the street a few months later when four masked men were seen running out of Arkham House, one wielding a machete. All of the residents were immediately told to stay in their homes, doors, windows locked, not to come out until the police told them that they could exit their properties. It was absolutely devastating for this community. Mark Taylor was a housing officer working for MySpace at the time. He says he'd been told to fill Arkham House and quick. I had issues from the get-go with Arkham. It always felt too rushed. With vulnerable tenants, their housing benefit is usually paid direct to the provider. It was just assess, 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 get it filled, get it filled, get it filled. What do you mean, get it filled, get just it Just get filled. the property filled, get tenants in that property. We need to start claiming rent. It never felt like a charity. It always felt like a business. The tenants had dozens of convictions between them, and some had had addiction problems. MySpace says all tenants should get at least three hours of support a week. 
my time was that thinly stretched that was I able to offer them the support they needed? Quite clearly I wasn't because it descended into absolute chaos. Mark was worried about the impact on the village and the many elderly people who lived there. And did you raise this with yeah. senior management? I'd raised it time and time again that the process was flawed uh, and that we couldn't be putting drug addicts and alcoholics into Arkham House. MySpace denies it was under pressure to fill Arkham House. It says people are at the centre of everything it does and it's distressing that it failed some of its tenants and staff. Arkham House was forced to close for three months after the machete incident. Only then was Charlie able to see inside. It was destroyed, absolutely destroyed. I've never seen anything like it. Furniture was smashed, doors hanging off hinges in pieces, broken glass everywhere, blood, human substances on the walls, evidence of drug use. MySpace says there were instances a few years ago where service levels fell below the standards it sets. It says lessons were learnt and procedures were improved. When property developer Paul O'Rourke bought Arkham House, along with several other properties, he paid around two and a quarter million pounds. He then paired up MySpace with a property investor. MySpace signed leases with the investor and Paul O'Rourke sold the properties for 3.9 million. One and a half million more than he paid. A tidy sum. What made the properties so much more valuable to the investor? were long leases with rent paid for by the taxpayer through housing benefit. You've got people who are actively targeting people with support needs so that they can make money out of the situation, and that should not be allowed. Paul O'Rourke helped set up MySpace in 2012, and since then the charity has received around £100 million of public money. Paul O'Rourke says he's not been involved in the running of the charity since 2016. Since then, he's concentrated on his property business, enabling homes. MySpace and Enabling Homes are two different companies. They are. On paper, they're two different companies, but in reality, they don't work separately. They work as one company. And people have said, oh, this is Paul O'Rourke's housing association. This former employee believes Paul O'Rourke was still pulling strings inside the charity after he stepped away. We've disguised her identity as she fears speaking openly will affect her current job. Is MySpace run like a charity? It's not at all run like a charity. I think it started out with the best of intentions and now the purpose feels like it's just to make money. She told me MySpace was growing too fast. There were regular emails and meetings and kind of going, how many moves have you had this week? How many moves are you planning for next week? And the, the kind of churn is like, they're talking about a tin of tuna on a shelf rather than a person. MySpace says as a not-for-profit provider, it only takes on property where there's demand. It says Paul O'Rourke isn't involved in decisions made by the board and all transactions with him and his companies are at arm's length. Blackpool. And a block of eight flats. Another property, once owned by Paul O'Rourke, and sold on to investors with the lease to MySpace. Chris, Gemma and Louise, who have all struggled with their mental health, lived here from 2020 until late last year. It looks like quite a nice building. It does, out from the outside, but when, obviously, you get in there and it's not good at all. There's so many bad memories here. What sort of things happened when you were living there? Well, every day, there was, like, door being booted in, door hinges off, um, kicking. 
screaming, shouting, swearing, and chucking trucks outside the window, and it feels like it's crack house. MySpace says antisocial behaviour is not uncommon due to the vulnerabilities and complex needs of the tenants being supported. But Louise says she didn't feel like she was getting much support. They just advise you to stay in, lock your doors and basically phone the police. How did it affect you? Personally, myself, I ended up having a really, really, really hard time with my mental health and physical health. It doesn't feel like home. It doesn't. It feels like prison. Acts like a prison. People living nearby say there's still serious antisocial behaviour here. I'm on the verge of breaking. I can't cope with it. I've had enough. I just want to go. Wow. I can't do it no more. I'm just can't, I just don't want to live here. I hate it. MySpace says it's supporting those affected and rehousing two tenants who've been carrying out antisocial behaviour. MySpace says it provides bespoke levels of care, support and supervision for its residents. But we've been told that hasn't always been the case. Steve Andrews had a history of serious mental health issues and had previously tried to take his own life. His family says he was doing better and in March 2019, he moved into a MySpace flat in Skegness. This is why he was so excited. And in fact, I remember Mum and I saying it almost seemed too good to be true. We felt like he would never be alone. Things went wrong for Steve from the start. His support officer only saw him briefly, twice in six weeks, and spoke to him once on the phone. His health deteriorated. He lost so much weight. He never spoke to me about having meetings with anybody. I felt like the support had completely gone. Six weeks after he moved in, Steve locked himself out of his flat. A MySpace officer helped Steve get back in and noticed he was anxious. And the prescription drugs were scattered across the floor. It was in such dis... Oh, it's in... it, it was horrendous. It was dirty and there was stuff everywhere. You could tell he, were, he couldn't look after himself. Anybody walking into that property would see somebody not able to look after themselves. It was a Friday, and Steve was told by a MySpace manager she would ring his mental health team after the weekend. In the meantime, she made sure Steve had a number for the crisis team. Sue thinks that wasn't enough. What do you think should have been done? she should have dealt with it there and then, certainly not leave it from a Friday through to a Monday. That's a whole weekend um, of him struggling and feeling unsupported. It's disgusting. Early on Sunday morning, Steve took his own life on Skegness Beach. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Protect him, you know, by doing the updates, by visiting him, making sure they know what's going on in their own buildings. I think that's where he was let down. MySpace says Mr Andrew's death was a tragedy and its sympathies remain with his family and friends. It says the coroner did not reach the conclusion that MySpace bore any responsibility for his death. We've discovered Dozens more MySpace tenants have died. In a two-year period from June 2018, 47 tenants died. More than a third died as a result of natural, medical or unknown causes. Four were alcohol-related. Six people took their own lives and there were 19 
drug-related deaths. I think, I think that is absolutely scandalous. That is a, a total, totally unacceptable well, loss of life. Matt Downey of Crisis says his charity helps hundreds of people in exempt accommodation every year. These are very chaotic individuals with complex needs. Do we not have to accept the fact that people of that nature, as awful as it is, will die? I, I don't accept that it's inevitable. It's not acceptable to say that people will die of overdoses. On the face of what you've, said, what you've described, um, the level of deaths would say that the support is not being provided. Is 47 across a two-year period? A large number. It depends out of, out of how many tenants, but it, it seems like a high number to me. Would that raise concerns with you, a red flag? I think we'd be very concerned if the provider, A, hadn't identified that itself and wasn't trying to do something itself, and B, we'd be surprised and concerned if it hadn't come to us to talk about that pattern. Mm. 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 MySpace says it's spoken to the regulator and while the death of any tenant is tragic, there's not been a single safeguarding report, coroner's finding, or a serious incident review that has raised an issue of negligence by MySpace in any way. So far, I've discovered there have been serious problems for some MySpace tenants. Next, I want to know how many MySpace properties used to be owned by Paul O'Rourke and how much money he's made. Here's one in East Yorkshire. In 2019, this block was bought for £800,000, leased to MySpace and then sold for almost £1.6 million, all on the same day. Paul O'Rourke says, after expenses, the deal made him just shy of £400,000. If the individual you're describing has worked out how this system can be exploited, you can bet for sure that he's not the only person that's worked that out. And it may well be he's not done anything wrong in terms of anything illegal. Uh, but morally, it's got to be questionable. And in terms of how we want our housing benefit to be spent, it must be completely wrong. Documents from the Land Registry show Paul O'Rourke's companies have done more than 100 deals involving properties leased to MySpace. It's not easy to work out how much profit his companies have made because we don't know what expenses he might have had on the transactions. But if you add up the sale prices and take away the purchase prices, you get a grand total of around £63 million. Paul O'Rourke disputes this figure and says it's very misleading. He says it doesn't account for significant costs such as taxes, renovations, financial support for MySpace, as well as legal and other fees. He also denies doing anything immoral. But could there be a conflict of interest between the charity and the property millionaire. I've been past evidence, internal documents, that raise more questions about Paul O'Rourke's relationship with MySpace after he says he stepped away in 2016. It shows he was invited to MySpace board meetings and was copied into charity emails. We showed this evidence to an expert in charity law. Mr O'Rourke was personally involving himself in the management of the charity. Do you think it's an appropriate relationship? I, I regard it as totally inappropriate. We've learned just how financially dependent MySpace was on Paul O'Rourke. In 2020, he donated virtually all the money MySpace says it spent supporting its tenants. Six million pounds. 
he had a stranglehold over the charity, he was able to get the charity to do whatever he wanted because they relied on him, they were, they were dependent on him. We've also discovered that Paul O'Rourke owed the charity a small fortune, 4.7 million pounds. MySpace say 2.2 million has been repaid with the rest due next month. Documents from 2018 to 2021 appear to show MySpace agreeing to pay loans at the request of Paul O'Rourke's company, Enabling Homes. Well, it sounds to me as though Paul O'Rourke's companies were using the charity as a sort of um, bank, a convenience. They would apply to the charity for the money instead of going to their own bankers. Paul O'Rourke and MySpace both strenuously deny he has undue influence and say he's one of a number of suppliers. Mr O'Rourke says he hasn't attended a MySpace board meeting since 2016. MySpace says there may have been very short-term loans and is now investigating. Here in Bolsover, Derbyshire, the local council tried to take on MySpace. Uh, this is uh, the block of 16 flats that is run by MySpace. The council hands out housing benefit on behalf of the government, but in 2017, it refused to pay the charity the 360 pounds a week it wanted for each one bedroom flat. It just didn't stack up. Uh, what way? Well, they're charging more for rent than everybody else. It, it just didn't feel right to me. It, how can I put it? It didn't sit comfortable with me. At a rent tribunal earlier this year, the council argued Paul O'Rourke was indirectly profiting from high charges MySpace were claiming. The judge didn't agree, saying he'd seen no evidence to suggest impropriety and the rent was fair. I show Councillor Fritchley some of the documents from our whistleblowers. Well, they showed that there's a link between Paul O'Rourke and uh, MySpace. And that's why we failed, we, you know, in front of the judge, because we couldn't establish that link. I think if we got this documentation, we would have established that link. Since the tribunal, Bolsover has now paid MySpace hundreds of thousands of pounds and backdated benefits. Not best pleased, not best pleased. And who's footing bill? And who's paying price? You know, uh, public are paying price uh, and footing bill. And that's our annual trip to the Christmas markets. Mm. And he, he used to always enjoy that mainly for the food, and, <laughs> yeah. Lindsay Bessel's 24-year-old son, Nick, has been a MySpace tenant for four years. He lives at Enfield House in Bolton, another former Polo Rock property. Nick's autistic and doesn't want to appear on camera, so he said his mum can speak for him. He looks really happy. He was happy. Lindsay says her son Nick has been badly let down by MySpace. Sometimes they don't see people for weeks or they constantly change the day and change the time they come in. And when the housing support officers do arrive, how long do they stay? They probably stay about five to ten minutes. They ask him, has he got food in? Or... Are his bills paid? Well, they should know that. Um, and then they just go. Last year, MySpace produced a detailed report intended to justify its claims to higher rates of housing benefit. It said it provided all its tenants with personal care, including prompting or supervising them to wash, cook or dress themselves. 
Well, that's the first I've heard about it because even on his care plan, it doesn't include personal care. And he's never had personal care, and that's never been mentioned ever to us. No one's ever cooked him a meal or physically made sure he's got food in or gone shopping with him. That falls down to me. Providers of personal care must be registered with the Care Quality Commission. We asked them about MySpace. They told us the charity's registration to provide personal care lapsed in 2017 and hasn't been renewed since. MySpace says it now intends to register with the CQC. It says its records show Nick was contacted regularly, but has launched an investigation into his case. MySpace have consistently told us there is nothing inappropriate about Paul O'Rourke's relationship with the charity. But we've discovered some members of MySpace's board have connections to him or his businesses. MySpace says it's looking at its governance procedures. As a result of engaging with Panorama, trustees who are employees or former employees of Mr O'Rourke or as companies will be stepping down from the board in the coming weeks. The regulator of social housing is worried about other charities having close relationships with property developers. As a regulator, we talk about this as being a property issue. The registered provider should be doing things that are in its own best interests and from the best interests of its customers. And sometimes these deals look as though they're being done in the best interests of other people and not in, in the interests of the tenants. And where we see it happening, we, we, we try and act as a regulator to stop that. As a registered provider of social housing, MySpace mm. is being looked into by the regulator. But the charity has now applied to come off the register, saying it will make no difference to the services it can provide or the money it can claim. It'll mean less scrutiny. There are calls for the regulations to be overhauled to better protect both tenants and taxpayers. This is a national scandal because at least £800 million of taxpayers' money is going to pay for this form of exempt accommodation. Uh, we think there's somewhere around 100, 150,000 people living in this situation. So the only way forward is for the government to grasp this problem, grasp the seriousness, the size and the severity of it, and deal with it in a kind of comprehensive way. The government says there are many excellent supported housing providers, but says it's recently announced new laws to protect residents and give councils stronger powers to intervene, backed by an investment of £20 million. Meanwhile, tenants and their families say they just want to be supported well enough to live in peace. I'd like MySpace to do what they said they were going to do initially, which is to support my son, um, improve his standard of living and feel safe in his own home. A brutal battle told by those who lived it. 40 years on and with unflinching honesty, our Falklands War, a frontline story, is now on BBC iPlayer.